now facing an existential crisis and for way too long the politicians and the people in power have gotten away with not doing anything at all but we will make sure that they will not get away with it any longer the biggest and most dangerous misconceptions is that people are aware of what's going on but people know People don't know. If they would have known, they would be pure evil. People aren't evil, they are just uninformed. I know many of you don't want to listen to us. You say we are just children. Now we probably don't even have a future anymore. Because that future was sold so that a small number of people could make unimaginable amounts of money. The UK's active current support of new exploitations of fossil fuels, like for example the UK shale gas fracking industry, the expansion of airports, as well as the planning commission for a brand new coal mine, is beyond absurd. Your voice, still calm and clear, is like the voice of our country. And as I listened to you, I felt both admiration, but also a sense of responsibility and guilt. First of all, well done on what you've done. But I think across the house we all believe in encouraging young people to stand up and speak up and say what they think and make their concerns known. So it was a pleasure for me, amongst other colleagues, to welcome Greta. This movement has become huge. It's and it has escalated these last couple of months. I don't see myself as a leader since this is a movement everyone is equally important. And we will never stop fighting. We will never stop fighting for this planet and for ourselves, our futures and for the futures of our children and grandchildren. Thank you. We are going to end today um, with the words of 15-year-old Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg, who addressed the UN plenary session last night. My name is Greta Thunberg. I am 15 years old, and I'm from Sweden. I speak on behalf of climate justice now. Many people say that Sweden is just a small country, and it doesn't matter what we do. But I've learned that you are never too small to make a difference. And if a few children can get headlines all over the world just by not going to school, then imagine what we could all do together if we really wanted to. But to do that, we have to speak clearly, no matter how uncomfortable that may be. You only speak of green, eternal economic growth because you are too scared of being unpopular. You only talk about moving forward with the same bad ideas that got us into this mess, even when the only sensible thing to do is pull the emergency brake. You are not mature enough to tell it like it is. Even that burden you leave to us children. But I don't care about being popular. I care about climate justice and a living planet. Our civilization is being sacrificed for the opportunity of a very small number of people to continue making enormous amounts of money. Our biosphere is being sacrificed so that rich people in countries like mine can live in luxury. It is the sufferings of the many which pay for the luxuries of the few. The year 2078, I will celebrate my 75th birthday. If I have children, maybe they will spend that day with me. Maybe they will ask me about you. Maybe they will ask why you didn't do anything while there still was time to act. You say you love your children above all else, and yet you are stealing their future in front of their very eyes. Until you start focusing on what needs to be done, rather than what is politically possible, there is no hope. We cannot solve a crisis without treating it as a crisis. 
we need to keep the fossil fuels in the ground and we need to focus on equity. And if solutions within this system are so impossible to find, then maybe we should change the system itself. We have not come here to beg world leaders to care. You have ignored us in the past and you will ignore us again. We have run out of excuses and we are running out of time. We have come here to let you know that change is coming, whether you like it or not. The real power belongs to the people. Thank you. You've just been listening to 15-year-old Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg addressing the UN plenary last night. She has called for a global school strike on Friday. I know many of you don't want to listen to us. You say we are just children. We are only repeating the message of the United Climate Science. Many of you appear concerned that we are wasting valuable lesson time. But I assure you, we will go back to school the moment you start listening to the science and give us a future. Is that really too much to ask? Now we probably don't even have a future anymore. Because that future was sold so that a small number of people could make unimaginable amounts of money. It was stolen from us every time you said that the sky was the limit and that you only live once. The UK's active current support of new exploitations of fossil fuels, like for example the UK shale gas fracking industry, the expansion of this North Sea. as well as the planning commission for a brand new coal mine is beyond absurd. Did you hear me? Yes. Is my English okay? Yes. Because I'm beginning to wonder. <laughs> In the last six months, I've travelled around Europe for hundreds of hours in trains, electric cars and buses, repeating these life-changing words over and over again. But no one seems to be talking about it. And nothing has changed. In fact, the emissions are still rising. I want you to act as if the house was on fire. I have said those words before. And a lot of people has, has explained why that is a bad idea. A great number of politicians have told me that panic never leads to anything good. And I agree. To panic, unless you have to, is a terrible idea. But when your house is on fire and you want to keep your house from burning to the ground, then that does require, require some level of panic. We are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction and the extinction rate is up to 10,000 times faster than what is considered normal, with up to 200 species becoming extinct every single day. Erosion of fertile topsoil, deforestation of our great forests, Toxic air pollution, loss of insects and wildlife, the acidification of our oceans. These are all disastrous trends being accelerated by a way of life that we, here in our financially fortunate part of the world, see as our right to simply carry on. Our house is falling apart. And our leaders, need to, our leaders need to start acting accordingly. Because at the moment they are not. If our house was falling apart, our leaders wouldn't go on like you do today. You would change almost every part of your behavior, as you do in an emergency. If our house was falling apart, you wouldn't hold three emergency Brexit summits and no emergency summit regarding the breakdown of the climate and environment. The EU elections are coming up soon. And many of us 
who will be affected the most by this crisis, people like me, are not allowed to vote. Nor are we in a position to shape the decisions of business, politics, engineering, media, education or science. Because the time it takes for us to educate ourselves to do that simply does no longer exist. And that is why millions of children are taking it to the streets, school striking for the climate to create attention for the climate crisis. You need to listen to us, we who cannot vote. You need to vote for us, for your children and grandchildren. What we are doing now can soon no longer be undone. In this election, you vote for the future living conditions for humankind. And though the politics needed do not exist today, some alternatives are certainly less worse than others. And I have read that some parties do not even want me standing here today because they so desperately do not want to talk about climate breakdown. To do your best is no longer good enough. We must all do the seemingly possible. And it's okay if you refuse to listen to me. I am, after all, just a 60-year-old schoolgirl from Sweden. But you cannot ignore the scientists or the science or the millions of school, ch school striking children who are school striking for the right to a future. I beg you, please do not fail on this. When I was about eight years old, I first heard about something called climate change or global warming. Apparently that was something humans had created by our way of living. I was told to turn off the lights to save energy and to recycle paper to save resources. I remember thinking that it was very strange that humans, who are an animal species among others, could be capable of changing the Earth's climate. Because if we were, and if it was really happening, we wouldn't be talking about anything else. As soon as you turn on the TV, everything would be about that. Headlines, radio, newspapers. You would never read or hear about anything else. As if there was a world war going on. But no one ever talked about it. If burning fossil fuels was so bad that it threatened our very existence, how could we just continue like before? Why were there no restrictions? Why wasn't it made illegal? To me, that did not add up. It was too unreal. So when I was 11, I became ill. I fell into depression. I stopped talking and I stopped eating. In two months, I lost about 10 kilos of weight. Later on, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, OCD, and selective mutism. That basically means I only speak when I think it's necessary. Now is one of those moments. For those of us who are on the spectrum, almost everything is black or white. We aren't very good at lying, and we usually don't enjoy participating in the social game that the rest of you seem so fond of. I think in many ways that we autistic are the normal ones, and the rest of the people are pretty strange. Especially when it comes to the sustainability crisis, where everyone keeps saying that climate change is an existential threat and the most important issue of all, and yet they just carry on like before. I don't understand that, because if the emissions have to stop, then we must stop the emissions. To me, that is black or white. There are no grey areas when it comes to survival. Either we go on as a civilization or we don't. We have to change. Rich countries like Sweden need to start reducing emissions by at least 15% every year. 
and that is so that we can stay below a 2 degree warming target. Yet, as the IPCC have recently demonstrated, aiming instead for 1.5 degrees Celsius would significantly reduce the climate impacts. But we can only imagine what that means for reducing emissions. You would think the media and every one of our leaders would be talking about nothing else, but they never even mention it. Nor does anyone ever mention the greenhouse gases already locked in the system, nor that air pollution is hiding a warming, so that when we stop burning fossil fuels, we already have an extra level of warming, perhaps as high as 0.5 to 1.1 degrees Celsius. Furthermore, does hardly anyone speak about the fact that we are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction, with up to 200 species going extinct every single day. That the extinction rate is today between 1,000 and 10,000 times higher than what is seen as normal. Nor does hardly anyone ever speak about the aspect of equity or climate justice, clearly stated everywhere in the Paris Agreement, which is absolutely necessary to make it work on a global scale. That means that rich countries need to get down to zero emissions within 6 to 12 years, with today's emission speed. And that is so that people in poorer countries can have a chance to heighten their standard of living by building some of the infrastructure that we have already built, such as roads, schools, hospitals, clean drinking water, electricity, and so on. Because how can we expect countries like India or Nigeria to care about the climate crisis if we, who already have everything, don't care even a second about it or our actual commitments to the Paris Agreement? So, why are we not reducing our emissions? Why are they, in fact, still increasing? Are we knowingly causing a mass extinction? Are we evil? No, of course not. People keep doing what they do because the vast majority doesn't have a clue about the actual consequences of our everyday life. And they don't know the rapid changes required. We all think we know, and we all think everybody knows, but we don't. Because how could we? If there really was a crisis, and if this crisis was caused by our emissions, you would at least see some signs. Not just flooded cities, tens of thousands of dead people, and whole nations leveled to piles of torn down buildings. You would see some restrictions. But no, and no one talks about it. There are no emergency meetings, no headlines, no breaking news. No one is acting as if we were in a crisis. Even most climate scientists or green politicians keep on flying around the world, eating meat and dairy. If I live to be 100, I will be alive in the year 2103. When you think about the future today, you don't think beyond the year 2050. By then, I will, in the best case, not even have lived half of my life. What happens next? The year 2078, I will celebrate my 75th birthday. If I have children or grandchildren, maybe they will spend that day with me. Maybe they will ask me about you, the people who were around back, back in 2018. Maybe they will ask why you didn't do anything, while there still was time to act. What we do or don't do right now will affect my entire life and the lives of my children and grandchildren. What we do or don't do right now, me and my generation can't undo in the future. So when school started in August this year, I decided that this was enough. 
I sat myself down on the ground outside the Swedish parliament. I school striked for the climate. Some people say that I should be in school instead. Some people say that I should study to become a climate scientist so that I can solve the climate crisis. But the climate crisis has already been solved. We already have all the facts and solutions. All we have to do is to wake up and change. And why should I be studying for a future that soon will be no more? When no one is doing anything whatsoever to save that future. And what is the point of learning facts within the school system? When the most important facts given by the fine science of that same school system clearly means nothing to our politicians and our society. Some people say that Sweden is just a small country and that it doesn't matter what we do. But I think that if a few children can get headlines all over the world just by not going to school for a few weeks, imagine what we could all do together if you wanted to. Now we're almost at the end of my talk. And this is where people usually, people usually start talking about hope. Solar panels, wind power, circular economy, and so on. But I'm not going to do that. We've had 30 years of pep talking and selling positive ideas. And I'm sorry, but it doesn't work. Because if it would have, the emissions would have gone down by now. They haven't. And yes, we do need hope. Of course we do. But the one thing we need more than hope is action. Once we start to act, hope is everywhere. So instead of looking for hope, look for action. Then, and only then, hope will come. Today, we use 100 million barrels of oil every single day. There are no politics to change that. There are no rules to keep that oil in the ground. So we can't save the world by playing by the rules. Because the rules have to be changed. Everything needs to change. And it has to start today. Thank you. This is an existential crisis, and we must ev do everything we can to stop it. Adults keep saying, we owe it to the young people to give them hope. But I don't want your hope. I want you to panic. And then I want you to act. Most emissions aren't caused by individuals, they're caused by corporations and states. So we somehow must make them change as well. make people become aware of that we are facing an existential crisis and that this is not just, I am not a celebrity.